Magandang buhay mga bata. Tara, samahanin niyo ako matuto kasama si Teacher Aika, your online teacher. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell for more videos. Thank you! Matatag Curriculum, Science Grade 4, Quarter 2, Lesson 4. Our topic for today is about Plants and Animals and Their Habitats. This is Teacher Aika, your online teacher. Let's start! Learning Competency and Objective The learners use a drawing or diagram to classify some Philippine animals and plants based on their habitat. Some live on land or terrestrial, live in water or aquatic, or fly in the air or aerial. Here are the content. Plants and animals and their habitats. A. Terrestrial habitat. B. Aquatic habitat. And C. Aerial habitat. Let us have first a short review. Alright class, let's start by thinking about what every living thing needs to survive. Just like us, all living organisms, whether plants, animals, or even people, have basic needs to keep them safe, healthy, and able to live in their environment. Today, we're going to dive into an exciting lesson about the different kinds of places where living things, plants, animals, and even tiny organisms live. Our goal for today is to learn how to classify or group these organisms based on their homes or habitats. We'll explore how living things are specially adapted to live in different environments, whether it's on land, in water, or even high up in the trees. By the end, you'll be able to categorize different organisms according to where they live and understand why each habitat is just right for them. So why do you think is it important for scientists and environmentalists to understand and classify different types of habitats? Scientists and environmentalists classify habitats to understand where specific plants and animals thrive best. This helps them learn about each species' needs, behaviors, and adaptations, making it easier to study and protect them. By knowing more about each habitat, scientists can spot changes or threats, like pollution or climate shift, that might harm the plants and animals living there. How might knowledge of these habitat-related terms help us protect and conserve ecosystems and the species that live in them. Understanding habitat terms and classifications helps us identify which ecosystems need the most protection and why. When we know the specific needs of each habitat, like the balance of water, sunlight, and space, we can create conservation plans that keep those elements intact. This knowledge also helps communities and governments make decisions that avoid disrupting these ecosystems, helping to keep the species within 
them safe and sustainable. Unlocking Content Area Vocabulary Home A place where a person or animal lives and feels safe and comfortable. Abode Another word for home. It means the place where someone resides. Territory an area or region that an animal or group considers its own space, often defending it from others. Local A specific place or area, often one where something particular happens. Environment the natural world or surroundings that affect and support living things, including plants, animals, and humans. Ecosystem A community of living organisms interacting with each other and with their non-living environment like air, water, and soil. Terrain, the physical features or type of land in a particular area like mountains, deserts, or plains. Surroundings, everything around a place or person, including both living and non-living things. Vicinity, the nearby area around a place or location. Habitat A habitat is the natural environment where an organism lives and grows. It provides the food, water, shelter, and space needed for survival. Let us now go on with our first topic, terrestrial habitat. Terrestrial habitat. This is a place on land where plants and animals live. Examples are forests, deserts, and grasslands. These habitats have different kinds of weather plants, and animals that make them special. Temperate forest Unlike a rainforest, hot climate, a temperate forest has different climates throughout the year. The plants and animals here are adaptable to different climates. Animals include squirrels, rabbits, bears, lizards, mice, deer, and frogs. Boreal forest A boreal forest is colder than a temperate forest and is found in more northern climates. There are animals such as moose, beavers, bears, eagles, lynxes, reindeer, and even tigers. Rainforest Rainforests are biomes that receive the most rainfall. They are extremely humid locations with lush vegetation and many types of animals. Some of these animals include leopards, parrots, monkeys, snakes, panthers, toucans, and crocodiles. Desert A desert is a biome that has very little rainfall. 
The plants and animals here have adapted to hot temperatures and very little rainfall. Some animals in the desert include snakes, rodents, lizards, camels, foxes, and tarantulas. Tundra The tundra is the coldest biome that exists. It is found just the sound of the Arctic. Many animals have adaptations that allow them to live in this harsh climate. Animals include polar bears, foxes, seals, penguins, owl, whale, and snow leopard. Savanna A savanna is a location you may visit to have a safari. These have trees that are dispersed and can live in hot temperatures with little water. This is where you can find elephants, zebras, lions, tigers, and giraffes. Grasslands There are many types of grasslands and are different on each continent. American grasslands are known as prairies. There are animals such as prairie dogs, bison, owl, wolf, toad, gophers, and birds. Now let's go on with the characteristics of Terrestrial Habitats Weather The temperature and amount of rain can change how plants and animals live. For example, rainforests are warm and wet, while deserts are hot and dry. Soil Different types of soil help different plants grow. Some soils hold water, while others drain it quickly. Plants Each habitat has its own kinds of plants. For example, forests have tall trees, while grasslands have lots of grasses. Land shapes. The shape of the land, like mountains or flat plains, can affect the weather and what lives there. Animals. There are many different animals in each habitat. Some animals are found in forests, while others live in grasslands or deserts. Nature changes. Things like fires, floods, and storms can change the habitat and affect the plants and animals living there. Living together. Animals and plants interact with each other. Some help each other, while others compete for food and space. Terrestrial habitats are important because First, they are home to many animals and plants Second, they give us food from crops and animals Third, they help the climate by cleaning the air Fourth, they provide resources like wood and water Fifth, they are beautiful places for people to enjoy nature For our learning activity sheets, let's have activity number one, Habitat Hunt and Animal Match. Objectives to help students understand the concept of terrestrial habitats and their characteristics by exploring different plant and animal species 
found in these habitats. Second, to develop an appreciation for the unique characteristics of terrestrial habitats. And third, to introduce the concept of UNESCO's Sustainable Development Goal. Materials Needed Pictures of animals and plants from various terrestrial habitats, forests, grasslands, deserts, and mountains. Large posters or drawings of each habitat, markers, and labels. For the instructions, in this activity, you will work in small groups to explore different terrestrial habitats and match animals and plants to their respective habitats. Use your knowledge of each habitat's characteristics to make informed decisions. Group members assigned habitat. Animals and plants, you will receive a set of pictures. Decide which habitat each species is most likely found in and explain your choices. For the group presentation, present your classification and explanation to the class. Place the pictures on the corresponding habitat poster and explain your choices. Use markers and labels to identify and describe each species. For the class discussion, after all groups have presented, try to answer the questions below. First, when determining the habitat, what clues or observations help you make your choices? Second, did your group encounter any species that were challenging to classify or assign to a habitat? How did you resolve such challenges? Third, did you encounter any interesting facts or surprises about the species you studied? Fourth, are there any common themes or patterns in the choices made by different groups when assigning species to habitats? Fifth, were there any species you had difficulty classifying and why? Sixth, did any group present information that made you see a species or habitat in a new way? Seventh, what are the key features that distinguish terrestrial habitats from aquatic and aerial habitats? 8. Can you summarize the types of plants and animals typically found in terrestrial habitats based on what you've learned during this activity? 9. How might understanding these habitats and their inhabitants be important in the real world, such as in protection, preservation, and conservation efforts in relation to SDG number 15, Life on Land. And here is the rubric, Terrestrial Habitats, Habitat Hunts, and Animal Match. Criteria, Knowledge of Habitats, Group Discussion and Presentation, collaboration, critical thinking, and overall understanding. Four points being the highest and uh, one point being the limited. For the class discussion, overall score that's out of 16, excellent, 13 to 16 points, proficient, 9 to 12 points, basic, 5 to 8 points, and limited, 1 to 4 points. Good luck! Let's now go on with our second topic. This is about aquatic habitat. Aquatic habitats are environments where water supports life, including freshwater areas like lakes and rivers. Saltwater regions such as oceans and coral reefs, 
fresh water habitats have non-salty water, while marine habitats contain salty water. These areas have unique temperatures, light levels, and salinity that influence the types of plants and animals living there. Again, we have aquatic habitat. There are two kinds. First is freshwater habitats, and the second water is the marine habitats. Freshwater habitat. Freshwater habitat is an environment with water that has low salt content, like rivers, lakes, ponds, and streams. These habitats support a variety of plants and animals that are adapted to live in this type of water. Common creatures found in freshwater habitats include fish, frogs, turtles, and many insects. Freshwater habitats are important because they provide drinking water, help maintain healthy ecosystems, and support diverse wildlife. Rivers A river is a natural body of flowing fresh water that usually starts in mountains or hills and travels toward a larger body of water like a lake or ocean. Rivers are home to many animals and plants that have adapted to live in moving water. Animals found in rivers including or include fish, otters, turtles, frogs, and various birds. Streams A stream is a small flowing body of fresh water that usually connects to rivers or lakes. Streams often start from rain, melting snow, or springs and flow over rocks and soil. Many plants and animals like uh, small fish, frogs, insects, and plants along the banks are adapted to live in the moving water of streams. Lakes A lake is a large, still body of fresh water surrounded by land. Lakes can vary in size and depth and are home to many types of plants and animals. Common animals in lakes include fish, turtles, frogs, and birds like ducks. Plants such as water lilies, algae, and reeds often grow in and around lakes, creating a rich habitat for wildlife. Ponds a pond is a small, still body of fresh water surrounded by land, usually shallower and smaller than a lake. Ponds provide a safe habitat for various animals like fish, frogs, insects, and turtles, as well as plants like water lilies and cattails. Because they are shallow, sunlight can reach the bottom allowing many plants to grow and creating a rich environment for wildlife. Next is wetlands. Wetlands are areas where the land is covered by shallow water for most of the year. They are full of life, providing a home for many animals and plants. Common animals in wetlands include frogs, alligators, birds, and insects. Plants like reeds, cattails, and water lilies thrived in the moist soil. Wetlands are important because they help filter and clean water, prevent floods, and provide a rich habitat for wildlife. Now, let's go on with marine water habitat. A marine water habitat is a salt water environment found in oceans and seas. 
These habitats cover most of Earth and are home to a huge variety of life, from tiny plankton to large whales. Common animals in marine habitats include fish, dolphins, sharks, sea turtles, and coral. Plants like seaweed and algae also grow here. Marine habitats are essential because they provide food, help regulate the climate, and produce most of the oxygen we breathe. Oceans Oceans are huge areas of salt water that cover most of the Earth. They are home to many different kinds of animals like fish, whales, dolphins, and sharks. Oceans also have plants like seaweeds and tiny plants called phytoplankton. These plants help make oxygen for us to breathe. Oceans are very important because they provide food, help control the weather, and support lots of living things. They are like big homes for many sea creatures. Coral reefs Coral reefs are colorful underwater structures made from tiny sea animals called corals. They are found in warm, shallow waters and are home to many fish and other sea creatures. Coral reefs provide food and shelter for a lot of marine life and help protect coastlines from strong waves. Estuaries Estuaries are places where fresh water from rivers meets salt water from the ocean. They are often shallow and full of plants and animals. Estuaries are very important because they provide safe places for young fish to grow and are rich in nutrients, making them great habitats for birds and other wildlife. Coastal areas Coastal areas are the land along the edges of oceans and seas. They include beaches, rocky shores, and marshes. These areas are home to many plants and animals such as crabs, seagulls, and sea grasses. Coastal areas are important because they provide food, recreation, and protection for many species. Open Ocean the open ocean is the vast, deep water away from the shore. It is home to large animals like whales and sharks, as well as many types of fish and jellyfish. The open ocean is important because it covers most of the earth and helps regulate the climate and weather. It is also a major source of food for people. Mangroves Mangroves are special trees and plants that grow along coastlines in salty water. They have thick roots and stick out of the water, helping to hold the soil in place. Mangroves are home to many animals like crabs, fish, birds, and small mammals. These areas are important because they protect shorelines from strong waves, provide a safe place for young fish to grow, and help clean the water by filtering out pollution. Mangroves also store carbon, which helps fight climate change. Polar Seas Polar seas are the cold ocean areas found around the North and South Poles. These seas are covered in ice for much of the year and are home to unique animals like polar bears, seals, and penguins. The water is very cold 
and there are not uh, many plants but tiny creatures called phytoplankton. Live there and are important for the food chain. Polar seas are important because they help regulate the earth climate and are sensitive to changes in temperature, which can affect the entire planet. Characteristics of Aquatic Habitats Water Aquatic habitats are always full of water, which can be fresh like rivers and lakes or salty like oceans. Different places. They include different areas like coral reefs, ponds, and wetlands, each with its own plants and animals. Temperature changes. The water can be warm or cold, depending on where you are and the time of year. Light levels. Sunlight can reach shallow water, helping plants grow, but it gets darker in deeper water. Saltiness Freshwater habitats have little to no salt, while saltwater habitats have lots of salt. Nutrients Aquatic habitats have important nutrients that help plants and animals survive. Special features Animals in water have special features like gills to breathe and fins to swim. Freshwater habitats are important because First, they give us clean water to drink. Second, they help plants and animals grow by providing a safe place to live. Third, they keep the environment balanced by filtering dirt and keeping water clean. Let's have our learning activity sheet number 2, Aquatic Habitats Adventure. The objectives to help students understand the concept of aquatic habitats and their characteristics by exploring different plants and animal species found in these habitats. Second, to develop an appreciation for the unique characteristics of aquatic habitats. Third, to introduce the concept of UNESCO's Sustainable Development Goals or SDG number 16, Clean Water and Sanitation, and SDG number 14, Life Below Water. Materials Needed Pictures or drawings of aquatic animals and plants from various aquatic habitats. Oceans, rivers, lakes and ponds large posters or drawings representing each aquatic habitat and markers and labels for the instructions in this activity you will explore different aquatic habitats and the plant and animal species that live in them work in your assigned groups and use the, the provided images to decide which aquatic habitat each species belongs to. Write the name of the species and the habitat on the lines provided. Write your group members and assign the habitat. Here is your task sheet. For group presentation, present your classification to the class, place the pictures on the corresponding habitat poster, and explain your choices. Use markers and labels to identify and describe each species. 
class discussion. After all groups have presented, try to answer the following questions below. First, what do you think an aquatic habitat is? Is it just like any home we live in? How is it different? Second, what makes a river or an ocean a good home for fish and plants? Third, do you think a fish from the ocean would like living in a lake? Why or why not? Fourth, what do you notice about shapes or body parts that might help them live in their special water home? Fifth, what was the most interesting thing you found out while sorting the pictures? Sixth, did you see any picture placements by other groups that made you think differently about the water homes? Seventh, why do you think it's important for us to know about where water animals and plants live? Eight, what are some ways we can help take care of the aquatic habitats of these water creatures so we could contribute to SDG number 6 and SDG number 14. Here is the rubric for grading. Criteria, correct habitat identification, explanation of choices, collaboration, neatness and organization. Three points being the excellent, zero points needs improvement. Overall score out of 12. Excellent 10 to 12 points, proficient 7 to 9 points, basic 4 to 6 points, and limited 1 to 3 points. Good luck! Let's now go on with our third topic about Aerial habitat. Aerial habitat. An aerial habitat is a space found high above the ground where birds and other animals live and move in the air. These habitats include places like the treetops in forests, cliffs, and open skies. Animals like birds, bats, and insects thrive in aerial habitats. They use the air to fly, find food, and build nests. Aerial habitats are important because they provide homes for many species, help with pollination, and keep ecosystems balanced by controlling insect populations. Forest canopy The upper layer of trees in a forest where many birds and insects live. It is rich in food and shelter. Open sky The vast area above the ground where birds, bats, and insects fly freely. This habitat is important for migration and finding food. Cliffs and rocky outcrops Steep surfaces where birds like eagles and falcons often nest and hunt. These areas provide good views and protection from predators. Grasslands Open areas where animals like grasshoppers and birds can be found flying and nesting among the grasses. Wetlands Areas with water where birds often fly over and nest in the vegetation. Many waterfowl uses these habitats during migration. Characteristics of Aerial Habitats High above ground, aerial habitats are found high in the air, 
like in the three canopies or open skies. Flying animals They are home to many animals that can fly such as birds, bats, and insects. Nesting places Many animals build their nests in trees, cliffs, or other high spots to keep their young safe from predators. Food sources Aerial habitats provide plenty of food like nectar from flowers for hummingbirds and insects for bats. Wide range Animals in aerial habitats can travel long distances to find food and mates, making them good at exploring. Weather exposure These habitats can be affected by weather, like strong winds and rain, which can impact the animals living there. Light availability Aerial habitats often have lots of sunlight, which helps plants grow and provides energy for animals. Marine water habitats are important because First, they provide homes for many plants and animals like fish, turtles, and seaweeds. Second, they give us food like fish, crabs, and other seafoods. Third, they help clean the environment by filtering water and reducing pollution. Fourth, they support the water cycle which brings rain to help plants grow on land. Fifth, they help control the climate by absorbing heat and carbon dioxide. For our lesson activity number three, Sky High Scavenger Hunt. Objectives, first, to help students understand the concept of aerial habitats and their characteristics by exploring different plants and animal species found in these habitats. Second, to develop an appreciation for the unique characteristics of aerial habitats and sky-dwelling organisms. Third, to introduce the concept of UNESCO's Sustainable Development Goals life on land, and climate action. Materials needed A list of clues or riddles prepared by the teacher describing organisms found in aerial habitats. Images or illustrations of aerial habitats organisms and small prizes or stickers. This is optional. Instructions Number 1. In this scavenger hunt, you will be given a list of clues or riddles. Each clue will describe an organism that inhibits or inhabits aerial habitats, such as the sky, trees, or other high places. Your task is to identify and match each organism with the corresponding images or illustrations provided. Number two, work with your partner or group to find the organisms described in the clues. You can search for information in books or materials provided by your teacher. Or you can explore the classroom to find images of the organisms. Number three, read each clue carefully and look at the images. Try to identify the organism that matches the description. Write the name of the organism next to the corresponding clue number. And number four, 
Once you have completed the scavenger hunt and identified all the organisms, return to the class as a group. Here are the clues. Number one, I am known for my bright colors and can often be seen flattering among flowers. People love to watch me in their gardens. Who am I? Number two, I am a majestic bird known for my large wingspan and soaring flights in the sky. People often associate me with freedom. What am I? Number three, I am a small buzzing insect that collects nectar from flowers. You might hear my distinctive sound when I fly by. What insect am I? Number four, I am a type of primate that loves to swing from tree to tree. In the forest canopy, I have a prehensile tail that helps me with this. Who am I? Number five, I am a flying mammal that comes out at night. Some people call me a flying fox because of my large wings. What kind of creature am I? Number six, I am a reptile that glides from tree to tree in tropical forests. My skin has a unique pattern and I am known for my bright colors. What kind of reptile am I? Number seven, I am a small songbird that builds intricate nests high in trees. People enjoy listening to my melodious singing. What kind of bird am I? Number eight. I am a large predatory bird with sharp talons and keen eyesight. I'm often associated with strength and power. What kind of bird am I? Here are the answers. Number one, butterfly. Number two, eagle. Number three, bee. Number four, monkey. Number five, bat. Number six, flying dragon or dracovolans. Number seven, warbler. And number eight, hawk. For your group presentation, number one, in your group, discuss the organisms you identified during the scavenger hunt. Share interesting facts or characteristics about each one. Number two, why do you think it's important to learn about organisms that inhibit or inhabit aerial habitats? How do these creatures contribute to the balance in the ecosystem? And number three, how do we protect aerial habitats to conserving the ecosystems and preserve biodiversity and contribute to SDG number 15, Life on Land, and SDG number 13, Climate Action? Conclusions, as a class, let's summarize why understanding aerial habitats and other organisms that live there is important. What did you learn from this scavenger hunt? Share your answer to your classmate. Learners' Takeaways Encourage the students to actively participate in completing the concept map by providing guiding questions that lead to the desired answers. This will help them engage more effectively 
with the material and construct a comprehensive concept map. And here's the concept map for habitat. Reflection on learning. Number one, new knowledge. Think about what you've learned about habitats for plants and animals, like where they live and how they survive. Number two, caring for Earth. Consider how you now value taking care of our planet and the plants and animals that live here. Number three, self-check and goals. Look at what you know well and what you'd like to learn more about. Set goals to guide your future learning. Number four, amazing discoveries. Remember the cool things you've found out about habitats and how they work? Number five, growing up. Think about how you've become a better learner and nature protector. Formative assessment. Multiple choice questions choose the letter of the correct answer. Number one, what type of habitat do plants and animals living in the ocean belong to? A. Terrestrial B. Aquatic C. Aerial or D. Arboreal The answer is letter B. Number 2. Which habitat includes forests, grasslands, and deserts? A. Aquatic B. Aerial C. Terrestrial or D. Subterranean The answer is letter C. Number 3. Where can you typically find a penguin? A. In the air B. In the trees, C. In the ocean, or D. In a desert? The answer is letter C. Number 4. Which of the following animals is best suited for a terrestrial habitat? A. Dolphin, B. Kangaroo, C. Penguin, or D. Seagull? The answer is letter B. Number 5. What type of habitat would you associate with a butterfly? A. Terrestrial, B. Aquatic, C. Aerial, or D. Arboreal? The answer is letter C. Number 6. Frogs are commonly found in which type of habitat? A. Aerial B. Aquatic C. Terrestrial or D. Polar The answer is letter B. Aquatic Number 7. What kind of habitat includes ponds, lakes, and rivers? A. Terrestrial B. Aerial, C. Aquatic, or D. Arboreal? The answer is letter C. Number 8. Where would you find animals like squirrels and rabbits? A. In the ocean, B. In the sky, C. On land, or D. Underground? The answer is letter C. Number 9. What habitat is characterized by a lack of trees and very little precipitation? A. Aerial B. Terrestrial C. Aquatic or D. Subterranean The answer is letter B. Number 10. Which habitat is primarily associated with birds and insects? 
A. Terrestrial B. Aerial C. Aquatic or D. Arboreal The answer is letter B. Number 11. What type of habitat is a coral reef considered? A. Aquatic B. Terrestrial C. Aerial or D. Arboreal The answer is letter A. Number 12. Where would you most likely find animals with gills and fins? A. On land B. In the air C. In water or D. Underground The answer is letter C. Number 13. What is the primary habitat of a polar bear? A. Terrestrial B. Aerial C. Aquatic or D. Arboreal The answer is letter C. Number 14. What habitat type includes animals like eagles and hawks? A. Aerial B. Terrestrial C. Aquatic or D. Subterranean The answer is letter A. Number 15. Where would you expect to see a camel in its natural habitat? A. In the forest B. Underwater C. In the desert or D. In the treetops The answer is letter C. Number 16. What type of habitat includes lakes, rivers, and oceans? A. Aerial B. Terrestrial C. Aquatic or D. Polar? The answer is letter C. Number 17. Which habitat types includes plants like lily pods and animals like frogs? A. Terrestrial B. Aquatics C. Aerial or D. Subterranean the answer is letter B. Number 18. Which of the following animals is best suited for an aerial habitat? A. Crocodile B. Albatross C. Kangaroo or D. Grizzly Bear The answer is letter B. Albatross Number 19. What type of habitat do you associate with a hermit crab? A. Terrestrial B. Aerial C. Aquatic or D. Subterranean The answer is letter C. Number 20. Where do you find animals that breathe through gills and live in the water? A. On land B. In the air C. Underground or D. In water The answer is letter D. And that wraps up today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for tuning in.